Hey everyone, this is the Sony 20 to 70 millimeter f4 G lens and today we're going to be taking it out on location to see how it performs in the real world. Let's get started. So let's start shooting here. If you could get in a little bit more towards like the bushes, I want to get some of that green in there. That looks super cool there. And I'm just getting some wide portraits, so I love like your arms out. Looks okay. really cool. I'm using this lens on the Sony a7 IV, and as always with my reviews, I'll be sharing lots of 100% crops of the straight out of camera images, so you can get a good idea of what this lens is capable of. So if you haven't already, make sure you switch this video over to 4K. Fun fact, I'm pretty impressed I managed to shoot at almost every single focal length of this lens during our portrait session. That is very satisfying. You can see the autofocus of this lens is snappy throughout the entire photo shoot. I'm using a wide focus area so I can rely on IAF to see the true performance of this lens. It was extremely sticky on Kate's eye. I also have a few comparison images at similar focal lengths to a few other similar lenses I've shot with, including the Tamron 28-70 f2.8, the Sony G20 f1.8, and Tamron 20-40 f2.8. This is a pretty small and lightweight lens considering the wide focal range it provides. This lens has external zoom and weighs 488 grams. It feels comfortable and balanced on the Sony a7 IV. This 20 to 70 has a focus ring, a zoom ring, and an aperture ring, which features an iris lock switch. If you wanted to go around the other side, we could like lean somehow. Yes, yeah, that's cool. The focus ring, by the way, is linear. There is an aperture click switch, AF to MF switch, and a customizable focus hold button, and this lens is rated by Sony to be dust and moisture resistant. Now that we've seen a few photo samples, you can see the image quality of this lens is superb throughout the entire focal range. We have have beautiful sharpness and clarity on our subject. Even though this is an f4 lens, it doesn't seem to have a harsh sharpness for portraits either. I do love the rendering it has for skin. I think it looks super flattering. In terms of color, this lens seems to have a neutral color rendition. A little fun fact I noticed while culling the images from today, I had some focal lengths I seemed to naturally gravitate towards without even realizing it on the day. I had the most amount of photos at 38 millimeters, 50 and 70 millimeters, which matches up to the prime focal lengths I normally use for photography. So let's talk about focus accuracy. One of the only times this lens struggled to focus for me is when taking full body portraits on the 20 millimeter end. In saying that, out of the 20 20 millimeter photos I took during the photo shoot, only one of them missed focus on the face. So this lens has a pretty impressive focus ratio. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi doggy. I'm getting a full body shot here. That looks so cool. I get the dog in the background. <laughs> At 20 millimeters, I noticed that without any lens correction in post, there is a very heavy vignette and a little bit of a fisheye warping on straight lines which are close to the lens. You can still see an extremely faint vignette at 23 millimeters and you can't see it anymore from 24 millimeters onwards. That's super cool. Another time I noticed missed focus was during the close-up shots at 70 millimeters, although I believe this is the fault of the a7 IV rather than the lens. You can see in the picture-in-picture, picture, the IEF point was consistently on the glasses instead of Kate's eyes. I do think it's the eye-like shape of these glasses that made the focus point want to prioritize them, and I thought that was really interesting. Even towards me might look cool. Yeah. And then did you want to try one if you kind of like flop downwards a little? Yeah, that's cool. Aside from that, I had a remarkably good in-focus ratio for this photo shoot. I tested the focus accuracy on another day with Dan too. I took 20 photos standing still at 20 millimeters and captured 20 out of 20 photos with critical focus on the iris. At 70 millimeters standing still, I captured again 20 out of 20 photos with critical focus. Admittedly, it will probably be quite hard for it to miss since we're standing still and it's an f4 lens, but I do have to test it out anyway. It's nice to see that I had no eyebrow or nose focusing. I also took a set of walking shots where I captured on average 18 out of 20 photos at the 20mm end and 17 out of 20 photos at 70mm. 
With these walking shots, it would miss one or two photos as Dan got closer to the camera and he was at a head to shoulder framing. This lens has such a cool fashion photography look about it. We made sure to do a lot of wide and angular poses to really suit this wide angle look. This zoom lens has an interesting focal range because you can get those super wide photos with little to no depth of field. But then you zoom in to 70 millimeters and when you have the right amount of distance from your subject to the background, you are able to capture dreamier portraits with some depth of field and lots of bokeh. Lydia and I both said at the same time during the photo shoot how this location and the styling was giving us very LA vibes and I have felt inspired while shooting to edit these photos with a highly stylistic look. I wanted to go for a really overly warm color with a little bit of a low res feel so I edited these with a new preset I've been working on called Havana which will be out soon on my website. Oh, actually, walking, so if you, we start here, we walk together, like, down that way, we'll get, like, some movement shots. All right. And you can swing your arms around a lot as well. You can smile if you want to as well. I took photos on a different day so we can take a closer look at the bokeh at all focal lengths. This lens has nine circular aperture blades and the bokeh is nice and round throughout the entire frame. Also, look, I had a little family of kangaroos watching me take these photos. <laughs> they look so cute. Most wide angle zoom lenses have pretty significant lens flares and this lens is more or less in that group as well. On the wider end, there is a long lens flare, which honestly is not too big in my opinion. And I find this kind of lens flare manageable. Around the mid range of this lens, so 30 to 40 millimeters, is where I think the lens flare looks the most distracting as it's quite large, long, defined, and colorful. Once you start zooming past 50 millimeters, the lens flare does become a much bigger circle, but it has more ghosting and it's off to the side of the frame. This 20 to 70 has a great handle on chromatic aberration. I could barely find any examples of it in my photos. Oh, yeah, nice oh those cool. suits. Next up, we have some video samples Dan filmed on the Sony a7S III. This lens is going to be a great addition to a lot of videographers' kits. I can see this lens coming in handy for general videography, but especially travel and the overused word of the year, content creators. For me personally, I usually like to vlog on my prime lens, the G20 f1.8, which is 373 grams. So for about 100 grams heavier, you can get a whole zoom range up to 70 millimeters. However, at the expense of a bit of low light performance. The rest of these autofocus tests are done on the Sony a7 IV. Just like photo, this lens is extremely fast and sticky when it comes to autofocus. I'm very pleased to see how well it focuses on a subject as it's moving towards and away from the camera at a close distance. I find a lot of other lenses struggle in this area. This 20 to 70 does a really good job at keeping focus while zooming and it's great to see the lighting is constant while zooming as well. Sometimes on other lenses, you can see the amount of light being let in for the image changing as you zoom. This 20 to 70 millimeter has very minimal focus breathing as well. I would say close to no focus breathing on the 20 millimeter end. So that is all I have for today's review on the 20 to 70 F4 G lens from Sony. Let me know what you think of the review, the photo shoot, your favorite photos and the lens down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.